Okay, Bishop Ackerman, um, when we were at Holy Communion, yeah. you were not the chief celebrant. Right. But you also wore, if I'm correct, I thought you wore your house cassock. Yes. Now you're heading to a conference where you're not the chief celebrant. Yeah. So what will you wear? A good question. Options? To go back to the earlier one, the house cassock, which is the black uh, with the purple piping, is called that because that's what the bishop uh, wears in his office when he is greeting people at his house, thus the house, or when he's teaching. So that is kind of a teaching cassock. To put it differently, it's sort of like the bishop's streetwear. The, the cassock, as, as you and I have on uh, right now, would be called a choir cassock, or the, sac the kinds of cassocks that are worn uh, for the sacraments. The different types of vesture the bishop would wear if he's invited to do something, for example, what I'll be doing in South Carolina, gives me the possibility of three choices. If I were speaking at uh, morning prayer or evening prayer, I would be, I could wear a Rosh and Shamir, which is the English style. It's sometimes called parliamentary, and the reason for that is because some of the bishops, uh, a number of the bishops in the Church of England uh, are also in the House of Parliament. Mm -hmm. And so when they go to the House of Parliament, they wear that as their street wear and then that what they wear uh, at Parliament. So that means that the English Rosh and Shamir is not really a sacramental vestment. In fact, it's not even a vestment. It's bishop street wear. But it's not improper to wear it for an office that is a non-sacramental event. Mm -hmm. uh, the black scarf Right. It was something called a tippet, uh, was really worn by all clerics, not just bishops. So deacons, priests, and bishops would typically wear it, and it, it was a scarf. It kept everybody warm. In fact, most of them in England have pockets in them so that you can put some things in them. Now, the second possibility for me would be that I could say, okay, I'm going to be preaching at this event, so I wouldn't wear a cope and a mitre because that's uh, what the... Uh, celebrant is going to be wearing. I could if he invited me, but if I'm just going to be uh, preaching, then I could wear what's called these days a contemporary Rosh and Shamir. It's not that contemporary. It is really a prelatial Shamir that has the inset uh, lace with red, and then uh, it would have over top of it a sleeveless vestment which has been called a mantelletta. That is strictly what a bishop would wear outside of his diocese. That is, the mozetta, which is a shoulder cape, is properly worn by a bishop in his own diocese. That's not so much the custom any longer. It can be worn outside the diocese, but in origin that carries with it a sense of having uh, office in a particular diocese. So the sleeveless vestment called the contemporary Rashid is a derivation of the mantelletta. The mantelletta being what a bishop wore when he was doing something in a church other than his own home diocese. Mm -hmm. The third choice would be to wear a cassock, the, uh, the choir cassock, over top of it a short Rashid, which sometimes can be called a kata, mm -hmm. and then over top of the short Rashid would be a shoulder cape which comes down to here that is called a mozetta and that would be appropriate because that would indicate the following the first would indicate oh hello bishop you're here for morning or evening prayer that's what the english <coughs> rasha and shamir would say the second one would be oh hello bishop you're here for the eucharist but uh, you're you're obviously not the celebrant uh, probably the preacher or it could be asked by putting a stole around one's neck uh, to help distribute communion to the people. The third one says, oh, hello, Bishop, you're here to walk in procession and to be a part of our event, but it wouldn't necessarily indicate what my function was. Uh, where I stand in line would make it clear to absolutely everybody. That is, where a bishop stands in line indicates what his function is at the liturgy. If he's the last in line, it means he's the celebrant. The bishop standing right in front of him would automatically be seen as the preacher. Mm -hmm. Now, one last question. Sure. I've seen the Archbishop of York at Parliament yeah. wear the black shamir. Yes. 
with the black tippet. Now, yeah. uh, in uh, liturgical services, mm -hmm. evening services, or some day mm -hmm. services, I see them wear the red. Yes. So why wear the black? Okay. The black uh, is the, and the oldest. Matching, that's the black that's right, the black bands. Uh, only those with an earned doctorate formerly were allowed to wear uh, the red shamir. And so the black was just indicative of the fact that this was a cleric without an earned doctorate. And then with an earned doctorate, the red would be worn. Well, uh, honestly, while that's the origin, that's no longer the case. It's now just a matter of taste, to, to be really honest. And there are some who think that the black shows the more penitential nature, and therefore they wear it during Lent. Uh, nice idea, but no cigar. Okay, okay, <laughs> okay. So I've seen in some Pentecostal settings that we come from, uh -huh. um, Bishop Ordinaries yes. will generally wear uh -huh. the um, black shamir, ah, the yeah. black bands, uh -huh. and then those who are diocesan bishops or bishops on executive council. Well, yeah. bishops on executive council, they're generally wearing red, yeah. uh, everything. Mm -hmm. um, and then uh, purple for those who are diocesan bishops. So yeah. I was just showing the contrast good. because uh, Pentecostalism, which comes from the Methodist, mm -hmm. the Methodist from Anglicanism, mm -hmm. uh, takes some things yeah. and they're separating them. That's right. Some things are being confused. So it is. many are Anglo Catholic Pentecostals, right. but they don't understand why they're mixing and matching and grabbing. Like even right now, yeah. with us wearing the um, cords. Yes. You know, generally, you don't normally wear your cord with. Choir cassette. That's right. We would wear this uh, if we were uh, vested as we were earlier. That mm -hmm. is to say, you and I had other vesture on, so we would wear this. Mm -hmm. If we were wearing the house cassock, we'd be wearing the chain with it. Correct. So, and and the what's the correct length for? It actually is supposed to come down to here so that it can be tucked, tucked into in. the pocket. The only reason for tucking it into the pocket is because of the fact that it is a I'm looking for my chain. It's behind you. Okay, thank you. Uh, the reason for that uh, is because when we're running down the street, we don't want to break our uh, our pectoral cross. Mm -hmm. Now, this is the kind of pectoral chain that is used when you're wearing the house casting. By being able to shorten it, I can shorten it for when I'm wearing it around a uh, a shirt and a jacket. It gets lengthened when I'm going to be using it uh, with my house cassock. Because th this uh, particular, uh, right here, you see the the miter is uh, on the back a hook. And that gets hooked into this part of the house cassock so that when he's working in the office or teaching, when he turns around, it doesn't spin around and break because mm -hmm. many of our pectoral crosses are soft metals like gold. Uh, and, and the other thing is that somebody once asked me about the difference between silver and gold. Uh, it's a matter of taste. There's no such thing as I wear gold when I'm here, I will wear silver when I'm there. Has <coughs> no, th that's not even a connected issue. Now, it's a matter of taste. Now, when I was in Rome, yeah. All of the bishops um, uh, who were in house casting, all of them had silver. Yeah. They all had silver crosses mm -hmm. and silver chains. Now, mm -hmm. but the, of course, the Pope is the Bishop of Rome. Right. But other bishops that were native yeah. to Italy, yeah. um, maybe I'm thinking maybe it was the cardinals. The cardinals mm -hmm. had gold, but all the visiting bishops had silver. So was that a out of diocese thing? And, or? Uh, it's deferential. And okay. the reason for that, when you have bishops coming from countries where there's no money, that's right. Uh, to say gold would be a moment for them to go through an embarrassment, and this right. is a way of being able to include. Include. Well, you really see that in the Anglican Church, particularly in Africa. Right. You will see them maybe wearing a, um, a rope. Uh, a, uh, I will see them wearing a rope. I had a bishop come to me one day who was wearing a sun catcher, and it made me cry. It was a plastic sun catcher because he came from the poorest of the poor. Mm -hmm. So I took my pectoral cross off, and I handed it to handed him. It to him. Wow. wow. Well, this is uh, Bishop David Cheney. I'm here with uh, Bishop Keith Eckerman, uh, former 8th uh, Bishop of Quincy, Illinois, and now uh, Bishop Vicar uh -huh. of uh, Quincy, and he's also our Bishop Protector. We're here at St. Timothy, and this is another informative video on the Episcopacy.